So. Hey guys. Hi, it's Kaden and Lid. We're back. Yeah, Lid, ask me something crazy that happened this week. Um, what was something crazy that happened this week to you? Um, oh god, I already told you the thing with the st- <laughs> I'll I'll beep out her name in case she comes across this. Oh no. Uh, this morning there was like a man that came in like at like. 5 30 in the fucking morning yeah and you like put down a thing of beans and he was like crush these and i beans. didn't like <laughs> coffee no, beans coffee okay beans. I had a, I no like, i talked to beans. i talked to willow the other day too and i was telling her like how during the training every time i saw the word beans i started laughing <laughs> and she was like why does starbucks have beans <laughs> <laughs> That was my thought. I like imagined a can of Goya beans, and he was like, "Crush these." And I well, was no, like, How he was would like, "Do that." He was like, "Crush these beans," and I was like, "What? Do you mean like you want me to like the the grind through your coffee? You want them done a special way?" Because he also ordered coffee, and he was like, "Are you new or something?" Oh God! And I was just like, "Did uh, he say crush these or?" Yeah, grind? he said crush these. <laughs> and I was just like, "Yeah, I mean, I'm new," and he's like. That makes sense, because you don't have any idea what anything's going on. (laughs) I'm just like, sir, it's like 5.30 in the morning. Wow, he really made a meal out of that early morning interaction. Yeah. And then everyone, like, talked about how mean he was for 15 minutes, and I was like, guys, it's not that deep. He was just kind of rude. They got a a hook onto something. Yeah. It's it's early. And, like, the guy who came, who was, like, in line after him was like, wow, that guy was an asshole. (laughs) (laughs) At least people are nice at your store. (laughs) I mean, do you ever think about how, like, the clientele of Starbucks is, like, people that would have been mean to you in middle school? And it's, like, yeah. you're all working with, like, other queer people, and, like, the clientele is the group of people that would have, like, bullied queer people Honestly. in middle school. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, my it's God. It's, like, majoritively, like, queer people who would have gotten bullied in middle school or, like, those really pretentious kids who yeah. also would have gotten bullied in middle school. Yeah. Um, by the queer people. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, if you think about the hierarchy, the yeah, hierarchy, <laughs> the hierarchy. <laughs> that's a word I can never say. Like the the people that like the queer kids bullied were like the bottom of the <laughs> rung. I was like talking about this with a friend from St. John's the other day, and was just like, "Yeah, the people that like me and you made fun of, those were those were the lowest of the low because <laughs> no. we were we were kind of like I have to let the cat out." <laughs> I saw some scene kids at Aldi yesterday. Those still exist. I was shocked. I was like, oh, that's that's some scene kids. They were just vibing. God. Yeah, I know. I was like, I haven't seen one of those in a while. Nothing against scene kids, but yeah. <laughs> why don't why don't you ask me about your fan fiction <laughs> since that's the topic this week? You didn't ask me what was weird about my week. What was weird about your week? I had a terrible week. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. My computer died. Yeah, I saw that you you laid her to rest. Okay, so I'm sending her in, and I hope they give me money for her. But if they don't... <laughs> I love that you've gendered your laptop as a she. <laughs> you just did, and I'm just going with it. <laughs> um, I hope they give me money for it, but um, if they don't, it's okay, because at least it got recycled. That's nice. <laughs> returning returning her to the earth. Yeah. <laughs> giving her a green burial. <laughs> <laughs> and, like... Wyoming or something? Oh my god. Uh, my my old roommate from Darien and Edgemont, who you know, <laughs> who we talk about often, <laughs> would do this thing where she, like, wouldn't let you throw out, like, anything that was, like, a special recyclable. Yeah. Like, old power strips and stuff. Yeah. And she waited years and years and years, like, four years, we were just, like, building up, like, all these old laptops and shit. Yeah. Until, like, she finally, like, drove to a landfill in New Jersey. What? You yeah. can drop them off at boxes. There's, like, different recycling. Like, I know. Like, recycle boxes. It was just, just none of it made sense, but she was very domineering, so. Yeah, that's true. Just the power thing. <laughs> gathering the, <laughs> gathering the power strips. Gotta hoard the power strips. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. Yeah. Yeah, so that was my week. Um, yeah. I'm sorry that, man. That's such a weird thing to ask. Can you crush these? And then you didn't even say, like, what kind of grounds you wanted. Yeah, he was just like, crush these. I was just like, uh, what? Your total's gonna be 1176, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not crushing these. 
okay. crush them with my fist. Ew. Like, chew them up in your mouth? <laughs> spit them out. Spit them into his mouth like he's a baby bird. <laughs> Oh, no. All right. So this week we're talking about Star Wars fan fiction. We are talking about Star Wars fan fiction. So full disclosure, I have not seen a Star Wars movie since I was 19. Okay. Um, when my boyfriend at the time was very into, like, Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, and he made me, like, marathon them with oh. him in, like, a specific Wait, order. Wait, did he make you watch the extended, like, director's cut of Lord of the Rings? Oh, I remember I got so bored through, like, the second movie. Yeah. Because we watched the first, then we watched the second. And the second one, I got so bored that I just gave up and we started fucking. <laughs> like, That's fair. Yeah. yeah. The Two Towers is an arduous movie. Yeah, I just, like, I just could not invest myself in it. Like, even when I read Lord of the Rings as, like, a fifth grader, I yeah. just couldn't get into it because it was, like, too... It's very long and tiring. Long, dense. And it's, um, yeah, it's a lot of just, like... Like politics, yeah, and stuff. Um, yeah, there's like a Peter Jackson supercut of all the Lord of the Rings. That's like twelve hours long. Yeah, um, that I've seen, but like a couple times. Yeah, Star Wars. <laughs> I just like I remember like Episode four and five, and I think to a certain extent, extent six. I was like, yeah, okay, these are good movies. Yeah. I get it. Like it's like a Greek tragedy thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I like Greek tragedies. That's what I went to school for. <laughs> um, and then, like, the prequels, I just, like, there was so much CG. I didn't know what was happening any of the time. Yeah. I just remember Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. <laughs> Repressed memories of Jar Jar Binks. And just me being like, why is he there? And my ex being like, he's Jar Jar Binks. I hate Jar Jar Binks, <laughs> as you know. I mean, I hate him so much. Yeah. I really think, like... I don't know. There's the like, initial interaction where they find Jar Jar Binks and God. find out that he's a war criminal and has been, like, expelled from his city. Like, that alone should have told them. And he, his excuse... I'm sorry, this is... A, no, his keep going. His excuse for, like, being kicked out of the city is, like, he was like, oh, I'm very messy. And I'm like, there's clearly <laughs> more there. He's, he's very like, messy. Yeah, he's like, I'm very clumsy. And I was like, no, like, you've clearly done something atrocious. Yeah. Um... Yeah, Jar Jar Binks deserves Well, there's also the whole Jar Jar Binks is a racist caricature controversy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can see that in quite a few different Star Wars characters. Well, like, if I watched the, um... God, what's his name? The Joseph Campbell, um, like... Not NPR, PBS series. Okay. Like, a series of interviews with him from the 80s. Yeah. That was, like, funded by George Lucas. Because okay. George Lucas was his student in college, I guess. Yeah. And, like, a very heavy focus on it was just, like, all of these, like, Orientalism bits mm-hmm. that were very heavy in Star Wars. Like, the whole, like, Jedi Master is yeah. very imported from, like, Western conceptions of Eastern culture yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. Um. Yeah, all I remember from the Pequels, the Pequels. <laughs> I'm just gonna call them the Pequels. <laughs> um, is like the the pod racing. <laughs> yeah. Sequence that's now like this all is pod racing. That's all I've internalized. I mean, honestly, that's the biggest thing to pull from that. Yeah. Um, also, tying in with Orientalism. Um, Jasper, you can't keep doing this. <laughs> you, he does this every night. That's I'm trying terrible. to fall asleep. Jasper, he needs to behave and decide yeah. where he wants to be. Um, talking about Orientalism and just like the entire existence of like the Sand People, that they yeah. just call like the Sand People, and they're just like raiders that live in the desert. In the Mandalorian, they actually like give them like a culture right. and they make them. I, I think it's interesting that when. Westerners, like, specifically British people and Americans, create fantasy worlds, like, from scratch like that. They yeah. always, in some way, like, base these alien cultures off of, I guess, European conceptions of cultures that already exist. Yeah. So that sort of goes into Edward Said's um, bit in Orientalism where he talks about the Western system of knowledge of Orientalism is based on this, like, complex of ideas, this Mm -hmm. paradigm that really has no relation to, like, actual experience. Yeah. 
that's a bit. That, no, that's really that's interesting. My tangent. Okay. <laughs> that's what I I've studied. That that's what I study. Lot. Yeah, I mean, think about it. Like George Lucas is like an American man. Yep. With a very limited knowledge. Also, he's. I mean, he wrote the pe- prequels, and you can just see from there. Well, that's when they gave him like full reign. Yeah. To do whatever. And then everyone realized George Lucas was really bad at writing things. Well, he's a complete lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Another look at Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, he's a complete fucking lunatic. There's that. <laughs> what if Jar Jar Binks is George Lucas's like magnum opus? It's like the thing he's the most. What if of Jar Jar Binks is George Lucas's self insert character? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> like Stan Lee. Yeah. God. What if Jar Jar Binks was played by Stan Lee? <laughs> I guess at that point, like, the early 90s, he yeah. wouldn't have been, like, a frail old man yet, so he would have been fine. Oh, my God. I For a moment, I forgot he died. Yeah. Because he's just, like, such a cultural... Like, icon. Icon, really. right? Yeah, he like seems, like, everlasting. Yeah. And they kept, like, until he was, like, basically on his deathbed, they kept, like, wheeling him in to mm-hmm. do cameos. To do cameos. And then even in, um... Like, Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. He was still in that one, and that came out, like, after his death. Um, but yeah, yeah, he was a bad person. Wasn't it? Wasn't a good person. Well, I, I read some essay recently about like, like superhero comics from a leftist perspective. And I've heard from, uh, Philly leftists I used to hang out with a lot that like superhero comics are fascist. Yeah. Which when you think about it, makes sense. They glorify fascism. Yeah. Whereas like you have Jack Kirby, Versus Stanley and Jack Kirby actually came from a working class background, mm-hmm. and you can actually see that in his work. Versus Stan Lee, yeah, who is upper middle class, I believe. Yeah, and extorted like almost everyone who worked for him. Yeah, yeah. But I also did not grow up reading Western comics, so yeah. take everything I say with a grain of salt. <laughs> this is all secondary knowledge. I mean, I did grow up reading Western comics, and honestly, like, I mean, I feel like I was one of those people whose like eyes were opened by Watchmen. You know, I mean, not in Alan. Like, Alan Moore is actually a, a cool dude. Oh yeah, he yeah. He just like he's just full beard, wears nothing but plaid, and like lives like, in his little hut, if being you an anarchist. Something else from my work, I will not acknowledge it. <laughs> <laughs> he won't acknowledge anything associated, like which is like very fair because yeah. you watch like the Watchmen movie. I think like the only good Watchmen reboot they did was the show, um, mm-hmm. because the show like just really, like, tackles well the perception of, like, superheroes. Right. Um, But, yeah, even so, like, Watchmen was, like, the first thing that I read where I was like, huh, like, superheroes, like, maybe they're not, like, the best. Like, I don't know. It kind of, like, brought into perspective into, like, the lens of, like, the fascism, which is, like, what they're pointing out. Mm -hmm. And you can also see that in The Boys. Which is just, like, the abuse of power and, like, the extreme, like, debauchery and control (laughs) that, like, superheroes want. So... Why don't you ask me about my exposure to fan fiction? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I know that we talked a little bit last time about yeah. how you haven't really read a lot of fanfic. Yeah. I I don't know. I always saw fan fiction as sort of like, there's like several facets of nerd culture mm-hmm. that I never really engaged with, even though I hung out with people that engaged with them. Yeah. Um, one being like hardcore video games. Like, Agreed, yeah. Um, like, every morning in high school, like, I would stand with, like, my group of friends, and they'd all be talking about, like, fucking Skyrim or something, and I'd be <laughs> like, can we talk about something else so I can contribute, please? Yeah. Um, shout out to Alan, if you're listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> um, another one was fan fiction. Like, my, my one friend in high school um, wrote fan fiction, which I talked about last time. Yeah. And I, I read it. But honestly, the only fan fiction I have, like, clear memories of reading is, like, one South Park fanfic that I found. <laughs> and, like, the fact that that existed was, like, such a novelty to me yeah. that I kind of ate it up. Yeah. But, yeah, I I remember that One Direction fan fiction mm-hmm. existed, which I thought was weird. I remember there being a lot of My Chemical Romance fan fiction um, that I was, like, tangentially aware of because I was big in the MCR fandom in, like, middle school and high school, which I will freely admit 
and people would like <laughs> ship the band members together, which is like eth- ethnically <laughs> ethically dubious. <laughs> but yeah, I I don't know. Y- yeah, I mean, my I have friends who talk about fan fiction a lot as like sort of a pillar of their growing up on the internet experience, yeah. but it was not something I engaged with too, too heavily. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess um, I somewhat had the same experience. I, like, read a lot of, like, Wattpad and things like that, which was, like, fringe fan fiction. Like, yeah, they would, like, I, I know about Wattpad as, like, something that was primarily used by people in their younger teens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Middle, okay. like, middle teens, younger teens. Um, Probably, like, 17 was, like, the age cap. Okay. And maybe, like, older after, like, Wattpad had, like, been, like... I feel like if it imprinted on someone's life, like, they might have kept using it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's definitely, like, more inappropriate things on there. But a lot of Wattpad, if it was fanfic, it was either, like, band fanfic. Right. Or it was just, like, fanfic where they would steal characters, like, from Twilight and stuff well, and just, like, change their names. I feel like the thing that a lot of people, especially now on Twitter with all the discourse about minors... I mean, obviously minors shouldn't be exposed to sexual content, but I yeah. feel like something that gets left out of that discussion is that teenagers are horny yeah. and they're going to write NSFW. Yeah. So it's kind of, I don't know, it just seems like such a weird thing. No, it is because it's like a hard line to walk because right. you have to acknowledge that teenagers have sexuality in, in America, especially yeah. like their sexuality is so like oppressed that it becomes mm-hmm. shameful, but then also like they shouldn't be exposed to like graphic porn. From right, the exactly. Age. Um. Yeah, and I feel like that's something that gets left out of that discussion a yeah. lot because, I don't know, there seems to be this, like, puritanical bent now where just, like, even some, like, queer Twitter teenagers will be like, how dare you let me look at this? I'm 17 and a half, and I'm just <laughs> like, damn, when I was, like, 14, I was looking at, out for, like, anything sexual I could possibly get my hands on. <laughs> I feel like, I don't know, like, I heavily identify with, like, Tina Belcher and Bob's Burgers and right. how, how horny she was God, as an eighth grader. I, I remembered, like, earlier this week when I accidentally bought a manga with a lesbian sex scene at a secondhand store <laughs> when I was, like, 13 and I was, like, I was, like, so scandalized yeah, I know. Yeah, that yeah, I, like, yeah. hid it in the back of yeah. my closet where my parents could never possibly find it. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, like, an experience I had, too. Or, yeah. like, things like that. Or, like, you would get, like, a book from the public library that had, like, two graphic of, like, a sex scene in it. And you mm-hmm. were just, like, scandalized. Yeah, like, honestly, I think some of my first, like, exposure to sex and media was from, like, manga I was buying when I was 11 or 12. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because it's so taboo and it's, like, not talked about or discussed but yeah regardless like i mean i guess that get their hands on it somehow that expands our or opens our discussion of adolescent sexuality through fan fiction yeah i was yeah i wanted to talk Mm -hmm. about that um so do you want to talk about star wars first or you want to talk about? i mean we kind of already talked about star wars like the only other thing i don't know i know the sequels exist Mm -hmm. um i've never seen any of them all I remember is that uh, there's a little robot that's on a ball. Yeah, BB-8. Um, there's, there's what's his name? Poe? Yeah, Poe Dameron. Yeah. Um, uh, there's there's Ray. Yep. There's Kylo Ren as Adam Driver as Kylo <laughs> Ren. <laughs> I remember I was with, with a roommate. Um, that I previously lived with, we were in the grocery store and there was like Adam Driver on a box of cereal and she pointed at him and went, look, it's Kylo Ren (laughs) because she thought that was his actual name. Oh no. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that was very funny. Oh. Um, Yeah, that is funny. Same girl who said that uh, Iggy Azalea invented hip hop, which I will not unpack here and now. She did. (laughs) She did. What is there to unpack? Iggy Azalea, she's from Australia, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the white lady from Australia. She did indeed. Re, she invented hip hop, <laughs> perhaps reinvented hip hop, but um, she definitely brought it to the mainstream. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, I ne- I never watched any of the sequel movies. 
I know the characters, I guess. I know that Carrie Fisher died very suddenly after the first one around Christmas. And like I believe it was after the second. The second one? Yeah, it was after okay. the second one. And then after that they had to like deep fake Carrie Fisher. Yeah, they um into the movies. Well, most of the scenes she was in had already been recorded. Okay. Um, but they cut out a significant portion of those. Okay. They cut out like <clears throat> almost an entire storyline from the third one. Um because they didn't want to like make it too like fake. Yeah. Um, See, I was under the impression that based on Tumblr and Twitter, I guess, yeah. that they just like fucking CGI'd Uncanny Valley <clears throat> the recently deceased Carrie Fisher. I mean, to an extent they did. Okay. Because there were scenes in the third movie that were pretty weird that were Carrie Fisher scenes. I when I watched the movie, mm-hmm. I did not know that they were fake. I thought like all of her scenes okay, were so it wasn't filmed. it wasn't like uncanny. Yeah, and then my brother was talking about it. And he's like, "Wow, like those were bad." And I was like, "I thought it was just Carrie Fisher." <laughs> just like, <laughs> like didn't pick up on the deep fake. I, I thought it was just her. Yeah, <laughs> I am who the deep fakes target. <laughs> I can't tell. Oh my god. That's really funny. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about. This is a ferret mug. Yeah, it's a. It has it's, a ferret. It's themed I've, with ferret. I love it so much. I've had that since I was like seven. Oh, that's so. Cute. I used to get the ferret calendar when I was a kid. That's so cute. Yeah, oh, that's adorable. I used to get ferret magazine. Did they dress them in costumes? Or yeah, it was like it was like the baby calendar. Oh. But it was with ferrets. With ferrets, that's better than the baby calendar. You're right, exactly. In my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I think, like, there was definitely, like, a lot of fanfic that came out almost, like, immediately after the first new Star Wars movie yeah. came out. The last, um, not The Last Jedi. Hm, sorry. Uh, The Force Awakens. Because if you notice, like, the fanfic that I had you read, like, that was literally published, like, maybe a week after. Yeah, I noticed it was, like, 2016, 2017. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. It was either early 2017 or late 2016. Mm-hmm. The movie came ar- out around Christmas and... 2015. Yeah, so it was probably like early 2016 that it okay. came out. Um, yeah, but like almost immediately afterwards, there was like this huge surge in fanfic. Um, I think I saw the movie like a week after it came out, and right. I literally went home that <clears throat> night and was just like, let me see this fanfic that's going on. Okay. Um, yeah, just because simply like, honestly, I feel like the relationship between Poe and Finn was probably one of like the first um like implied gay relationship. I mean, was it was it queer baiting? So that's something I want to talk about. <laughs> okay, please, please lead in. Um so like in the movies, okay, so first I have to explain how the movies came out and this like horrible amalgam that is this trilogy of films. Yeah, I just like I don't know. Just like every once in a while a new one would come out and I'd be like, oh okay, I guess there's another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they came out every other year, um, like, around Christmas time. Yeah, that and makes sense. Between between the first and the second coming out, Rogue One came out, mm-hmm. which is, like, an exquisite film. One of, like, the best Star Wars films ever made. Wait, bef- between the first and second, so is Rogue One its own thing? Um, Rogue One <laughs> takes place before um, before the first movie of the original okay. trilogy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This um, is confusing. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's too many Star Wars movies. Yep, and every Star Wars fan seems to hate them all, so I don't understand that. But anyways. Um, I don't I don't understand Star Wars fans. Yeah. Uh, my first serious boyfriend was, as I mentioned at the beginning of this, a very serious Star Wars fan. He won the East Coast Star Wars Trivia Contest oh my God. in 2017. Well, I hope he never hears this. Yeah, I mean, I, I doubt he will. <laughs> I like I I doubt he yeah. st- stalks me in any capacity. <laughs> Let's hope not. Um All right. So this like trilogy from like the beginning was kind of like talked about and like people had an issue with the fact that Rey, who's the main character, was female. Yeah, I I mean that was around the same time that people were like freaking out about the all female Ghostbusters mm-hmm. reboot. So yeah. it was like that era of yeah. like men's right activism yeah. before it became, like, men going their own way and then eventually fucking incels, yeah, I guess. Just becoming fascists. <laughs> um, <laughs> the slow decline. The decline, truly. 
Um, okay, so yeah, when you when you look at like the first movie, so the first movie was directed by J.J. Abrams of uh, A Force Awakens. What does J.J. Called? What does J.J. stand for? I don't know. Okay, John Jacob. That's not <laughs> John it. Jacob. Abraham or Smith. <laughs> John Jacob Abrams sounds like a serial killer. Like to be frank, I hope that's not his actual name. But if it is, sorry. And then the second one is directed by Ryan Johnson. Um, people, I personally think that the second film is the best film mm-hmm. because it has the best character building. But right. the third one, there was like um, a lot of like a lot of issues around who was going to direct it. It had like they um, pointed at several directors and enough that like a full script was written. Okay. Um, before J.J. Abrams' script was written, but then he ended up directing that one as well. Okay. Um, and so because of this, there's kind of this like inconsistency and like incongruency across the trilogy mm-hmm. of who like really are the characters that they focus on heavily. Like obviously, like throughout they focus heavily on Ray mm-hmm. and to an extent um, Finn. Poe, kind of, like, his focus is, like, up and down. In the first movie, he's not that focused on. So, the the overarching plot is inconsistent, yeah. is what you're saying. Essentially, the overarching plot and, like, the key players are okay. inconsistent. As, as, like, someone who really digs, like, strong, long-form narratives... That makes me uncomfortable and pisses me off. No, me too. <laughs> exactly. I agree with that because I enjoy something that clearly has an intent from the set out. Right. And then they, like, achieve that. Mm-hmm. I, like, I really appreciate that because I feel like that's, like, the best kind of art form, you know? Right. Like, it's something that's It's, like, the most satisfying to, like, exactly. reach the end of. Exactly. But, like, this trilogy, like, doesn't have that feeling at all. Mm-hmm. It has more of the feeling of, like, pieced together things. Because, Ew. like, the Ryan Johnson film is just so much different than the other two films, like, with J.J. Abrams, because, like, obviously J.J. Abrams has that very distinct style that, like, everybody knows. Right. Um, and then Ryan Johnson has his, like, Guardians of the Galaxy type Oh, of he was the Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, See, I, like, I don't know directors that well, because, like, I don't care that yeah. much, so. Fair. Fair enough. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, movie, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, okay. And then, um, just, like, the treatment of, like, the actors of color in the film, has, the films has also been talked about a lot. Mm-hmm. After the third movie came out, John Boyega um, had an interview where he talked about how he and, like, the other people of color on set, especially um, the person who plays, I believe her name's Rose. She's, like, and she's, like, that Asian character and the actress was bullied so much online that she, like, literally quit all social media. I don't know if you heard Shit. about that. I mean, yeah. that seems to be a common trend yeah. with stuff like this. Yeah. Um, I just remembered a Tumblr controversy relating to the prequels, if I may bring that up real fast. Sure. Um, are you familiar with the um, the drama surrounding the Tumblr user RCD art? I don't think so. Okay, so they were um, a Tumblr artist who did, like... Oh, God, what's the fucking... The the Bee and Puppy Cat Frederator spinoff, whatever, the one where they're in space. They did fan art of that a lot. They did, like, really fetishy trans headcanon fan art of Captain America. Yeah. That got them in really big trouble. Yeah. Um, just because of the way he was, like, proportioned with, mm-hmm. like, massive breasts that were, like, <clears throat> bound down. Yeah. And they drew a lot of porn okay. of him that was very fetishy and that made people very upset. But they also did, um, they did, uh, prequels fan art of John Boega. Okay. That was, like, really looked like a racist caricature. Yeah. And they got in deep shit for that. I think they left... Twitter over it and like really? people this happened in like 2016 and people mm-hmm. will like still make YouTube videos about it wow because their art was just like so bad and became weirdly racist yeah yeah, yeah. and they would like deny everything and just say it was their mm-hmm. art style yeah so yeah that's very like I feel like that's very I don't know like it's more accepted than it should be you know yeah and recently, like, people being aware and, like, being willing to call people out for that is obviously good and positive. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that, like, just calls into, like, call-out culture and yeah. all of that. Um, I mean, but... I feel like discussing, 
like race in art on the internet is like an entirely different discussion that I want to bring yeah. up at a later time because that's yeah. like a deep one. Cool. Works. Works. That works for me. Um. Yeah. Okay. So no, I appreciate you like bringing that up. Yeah. Totally. Because um, I mean, there's kind of like a feeling throughout like the films that essentially like Finn is a black character for the sake of like being a black character like being a character like a person of color in the films to like have a person of color in the films Mm -hmm. i mean oscar isaac who plays poe he also he's um with tino so okay he's he's like yeah but it's that like the term forced diversity comes to mind and i know that's something that like people say that and that's sort of like a dog whistle for them being shitty Mm -hmm. and having shitty media criticism yeah and just being upset that there's people of color. Um, But I feel like when something's really obviously just, like, shoved in there and, like, not really addressed, that that is the term I would use for that. No, I agree with that. Um, And I would say, like, in The Last Jedi, which is the second film, that's Mm -hmm. probably the one where um, Finn gets characterized the most. Like, that's the one where they spend, like, the most time with, like, the actors that aren't Ray, like, actually characterizing them. But mm-hmm. then in the third movie, Finn almost entirely gets set aside, um, which is, like, pretty odd. He has, like, a storyline, obviously. But, okay, like, I was going to ask like, if, like, at least he had, like, a character arc in yeah, that movie. Yeah, it was a character arc, but it was, like, very, like, it wasn't super deep. It was pretty, like, shallow and mostly had to deal with, like, fighting and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and then we can, like, circle back to queer baiting. Yay, so, queer baiting. <laughs> um, and, like, the first movie, um, there was obviously, like, a lot of sexual tension. I mean, like, in the... Was it intentional? I don't know. Okay. Um, but it was definitely present. Like, there okay. was, like, like, for example, Poe is the first person... To, like, liberate Finn from his, like, place, um, because mm-hmm. he's, he's, like, a soldier. Okay. Um, and Poe, like, comes and, so Finn refuses to shoot someone on the battlefield, mm-hmm. and so he gets taken, like, prisoner, um, by his, like, general, and Poe is also prisoner on the, um, same ship. Right. And so then, when Poe is escaping, he takes Finn with him. Okay. And then he, like, gives Finn the name, like, Finn, because he's... Previously just referred to as FN 2138. Okay. Um, and so because of that, there's some sexual tension there. And then he, like, gives him his jacket and, like, all of this stuff. And so definitely, like, after the movie came out, like, just, like, in the public eye, there was, like, a lot of discussion. Like, are they going to get together? Like, this movie had a female main character, the first of Star Wars. Right. Like, is Star Wars going to, like, try and, like, have, I feel like, like, a like storyline? If they did that, though, so many... Just, like, knowing the Star Wars fans, Mm -hmm. that would have made so many people so angry. Well, there was, like, literally discussion, like, people were saying, like, if they did that, like, they wouldn't be able to air it in certain countries. Right, exactly. And that would, like, lose them revenue. So, they were talking about that, and um, even in, like, interviews, like, John Boyega or Oscar Isaac were like, yeah, like, we would love for that to happen. Mm -hmm. And, like, Oscar Isaac talked about, like, standing it and stuff like that. Um, Yeah. Obviously, like, he didn't say Stan, but he that, was like, That yeah, brings to mind right. the um the Sarah Z video mm-hmm. about not um Supernatural. Oh, yeah. Where, like, Misha Collins would, like, like actively, oh, yeah. actively speak that he wanted Castiel to be a thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Misha Collins is one of those people who's, like, lost to a fandom. Do you know what I mean? No. Like, one of those people who's, like, in... They're they're like in a series or something, and it becomes so entrenched in their life that it becomes like part of their personality. Like Tom Felton and Harry Potter, like it literally is like such a formative thing, like within their career that they kind of like commit their whole life to it. Or like Ian Summerhalder in The Vampire Diaries. I see. I like don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> I don't know. It was just like a little observation. Yeah, like, no, I feel like, like there's always like those people. Who just like cling to one thing that they got really famous for, and off. I mean, that makes like, sense. Yeah, like obviously he's been in other stuff, but it's right. just like that's like their, that's their big thing, and so because of that, they do like those little like happy yeah. birthday greetings and stuff. When My like, like I have David Tennant. Yeah. And Doctor Who is coming to mind. Yeah, I think he's done like more 
that's definitely like a big thing for him. Yeah. But he's been in other stuff too. Okay. I think like a big thing with David Tennant is he's like also like a very like acclaimed stage actor. Really? And I didn't that, know that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He's done like Shakespeare and it's stuff. It's always so funny to me when people who are like from Juilliard or like Yeah, no, or he's like, like well really good Shakespeare actors like wind up in these like popular media. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like Jim Parsons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, anyways, back to this. Yeah. So, definitely, like, I feel like because of the awareness and, like, in the public eye, everyone was like, are Finn and Poe going to get together? Mm-hmm. Like, why would they intentionally put this much, like, sexual tension into the movies? Like, they hug and stuff like that. Um, and there's just, and the direct, like, J.J. Abrams and everyone, they're like, nah, like, they're just bros, they're just pals. But, like, that's what they always say, you mm-hmm. know? And also just, like, queer baiting like they're like oh yeah they're just like friends they're buddies but like then there's like all this like underlying sexual tension and things like that it's interesting to me that you can't have like a strong emotional bond between two male characters without implied homoeroticism i agree yeah um just because of the way that we're socialized to view male male relationships i think yeah no i agree so I don't know. It's you see that a lot too with like fans' perceptions of like two male characters who are friends in anime. Yeah. Like Yaoi Dojinshi happens like any time like two characters basically make eye contact. Mm-hmm. Because to like female readers, that's like an implied relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. That's No, like... I agree. Especially like showing vulnerability or like mm-hmm. showing like your soft side or whatever for right. men. Like that's often like sexualized because there's I don't know I feel like in um popular like media there's no reason that like men would show their vulnerability and things like that yeah, to each it's other in, yeah unless it's in like the context of a relationship mm-hmm. yeah so yeah hmm interesting You're giving me giving me ideas here <laughs> mm, it's thesis time thesis time <laughs> yeah so all right so I guess that's like some background on that and the dynamics of it. Um, what did you think of the fanfic that I made you read? So at first I was like, this is completely fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Um, they're Star Wars characters, but they're at a bakery. Yeah. Finn was the one with the bakery, right? Poe had the bakery. Poe had the bakery. Yes. Yeah. But like all the characters were the same. And also like why people kept quitting this like law office, mm-hmm. which was weird. Where I was just like, how is this law I love office that you still have happening? Absolutely no context for this. And yeah, yeah. And I like as someone who like briefly interned at like a legal office of some sort. I was like interning with an office of general counsel for a company. Yeah. And I was just like, they they have like if people were quitting like this, it would become a problem with HR and like <laughs> in, like people would be upset on glass door and they would have to hire like a PR person. Yeah. It would become an issue. And I was like, this is unrealistic. <laughs> and my other thing, I was just like, why why is the robot a corgi? <laughs> and like that was the funniest thing to me. I was just like it. And I kept imagining, like, what if everything about the fanfiction were the same, but they kept the robot? <laughs> like, that would just have made me, like, so full of mirth. <laughs> but no, I thought it was really cute. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like, reading it as someone who does have, like, a pretty severe trauma disorder, like, it was very heartening. I was just like, oh, yeah. this is nice. It's, like, addressing the whole, like, damaged goods feeling. I know. I like that, too. Yeah. Um. So, because it's 2020, um, the, apparently the author just totally took out, like, the very graphic sex scene. Yeah, when I was, was reading it, I was just like, I was like, oh, this is, like, very clean yeah. and sweet and there's no sex. Yeah. And then I scrolled down to the bottom and the author was like, I removed the yeah. smut. There was, like, a whole <laughs> sex scene in there. Um. But she took that away, and you can't see it, because AO3, like, they, I mean, there's no, like, backlog or anything, or, like, previous versions, so. If we used Wayback Machine, would I be able to find it? I don't know. I, I'm not super familiar with Wayback Machine, but maybe. I'm, I'm a Wayback Machine enthusiast. Okay. okay. And the reason I'm a Wayback Machine enthusiast is because there used to be this 
insane. I shouldn't use the word insane here because the man actually was schizophrenic, it turns okay. out. Okay. But a website called Time Cube. Okay. And he, he had this, like, idea that the world was a cube. Sure. And he brought God into it, and it was just, like, you would scroll down, and he would, like, update it every few years. It, like, started in the 90s, and it went to, like, 2004. Yeah. Just, like, bizarre ramblings about, like, bizarre graphics in the corner. Yeah. It was, like, the world is a cube, and the different hemispheres are, like, different sides of the cube. And, like, the way the sun works and the way time works, it's the time cube. <laughs> Wait, so what does this have to do with the way back machine? Well, because he, he the man passed away, I oh, think. Oh, so you had so to use the way back. Yeah, he stopped paying for the domain because he died. Yeah. So the only way to look at this was to use the way back machine. Okay, gotcha. That <laughs> that's how sense. I found the way back machine. <laughs> yeah, you might be able to access it then on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure someone listening to this knows about time cube and isn't just being like what the fuck is Caden Russick talking about right now because time this is cube. this is one of those things that when I started college um at St. John's like a lot of my male friends and my boyfriend were like the time cube and I like I had to look up what the joke was yeah it was like it was sort of like in the same like brain space as the room as a joke okay yeah yeah of yeah. like the same era I totally understand that okay vibe. yeah gotcha Time cube. Yeah, time cube. Honestly, maybe I'm just gonna go home and look up the time cube. Look up the time cube. It's kind of out there. Yeah. I was gonna make an inappropriate joke about the time cube. <laughs> is it inappropriate to be like, and that man was Will Wheaton? <laughs> no, it's fine. Okay. Um. All right. So, I think like something that's really interesting to me is right. the use of AUs in mm -hmm. fanfic, like alternate universe. Versus. Yeah. Um, I think, like, a part of that really has to do with just, like, being able to take the characters and, like, placing it in a place that, like, you associate with and, like, that you understand and identify with, mm -hmm. which I think is kind of cool. Or also, like, the idea of, like, being able to take the characters out of, like, the traumatic situations that they're experiencing. Yeah. Or, like, what's going on around them. That makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um... Yeah, that brings to mind, like, a lot of media that I'm a fan of either have, like, very tragic stories, mm -hmm. like, Evangelion, the only way you're gonna really have fun with an Evangelion fanfic is with an AU, because Kaworu, who is the best character, is only there for two episodes, and then his fucking head gets squeezed off. Oh, sad. <laughs> Got him over there, my boy. <laughs> my boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, like, I'm gonna bring up home. I'm gonna like bleep out me oh saying. Oh my god! Fuck. Okay, I guess Cause... we can make that a meme. <laughs> <laughs> but like, stuck is so convoluted and complicated and long, and there's like so much bullshit going on all the time. Yeah. That the only way you can really have like characters interact with each other romantically is like through AUs. Yeah. Where they're like everything is fucking normal or something. Because mm -hmm. it's it's bizarre. <laughs> So it's, like, interesting to me because AUs are kind of, like, escapism within yeah. escapism. Yeah. You know, since, like, fanfic is, like, you making the characters, like, do what you want. Mm -hmm. And then AU is, like, you making the characters do what they want, but in a bakery. I don't know. <laughs> Why? Like, my, my friend Willa has brought this up before. Yeah. That, like, the bakery or the coffee shop right? AU yeah. is, like, a mainstay. I don't understand Why? Is it because people think it's, like, quaint and charming? I think so. It's kind of like that, um... I feel like a lot of, like, kids from our generation, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, they, like, idealized, like, working in a coffee shop or a bakery because it was something that was, like, accessible to them without, like, going to too much school. And even mm -hmm. though it's, like, food service, it's not, like, McDonald's, like, death I mean, food service. I mean, I guess that makes sense because before I got hired at Starbucks, I wanted to work at Starbucks for years and years and years. Yo, the other day when I was like, I was coming into work and there was like a new person in yeah. the back of the store that we were training. And my boss was like, they want to work. They've wanted to work at Starbucks for years. It's their lifelong goal. And I was just like, huh. Your eye just twitched. Like, I, I didn't like even know what to distance. say. I didn't even know what to say. I was just like. Oh. Well, no, it's just, like, my my brain in, like, my late teens and early 20s was just, like, working at a coffee shop is cool. Exactly, yeah. So... <laughs> I get to wear an apron yep. and, like, have, have whatever hair I want, and, and they can't stop people. me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
And that's, I yeah, I think, like, that's a big reason why. Like, the whole, like, wow, coffee shops are great. And mm-hmm. you don't get paid $7 an hour plus tips sometimes, even though that's what happens there. R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. I love late-stage capitalism. Do you ever think about, like, how long you worked for, like, $8 an hour? Oh, my God. How, like, you were just like, this is fine. Literally, I worked for seven twenty five. At my first job, I worked for seven twenty five for, like, a full year and a half before they gave me a raise, simply because they forgot to give me one. And then my boss was like, why didn't you ask for one? And I was like... Because this is what I deserve. I remember, like, the first month after I got hired at JJ's, uh, the assistant manager, who will not be named, took <laughs> took me into the back and was like, I'm going to give you a raise to $8 an hour. Don't tell anybody. I remember there's, that. Because p- there's people here who've been working here for years that don't make $8 an hour. Which is, like, frightening, but true. Yeah, and true. I was just like... Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. And then I made eight dollars an hour there for a year before they gave me another raise. I like literally had to leverage quitting to make eleven dollars an hour there. That's just so absurd. And I think about how I made twenty eight thousand dollars a year. Which when you th- when you're like sitting down thinking about it, you're like, okay, that's like obviously that's like barely livable, but yeah. it's livable. Yeah. And then you. Th- like, you're actually doing it, and you're just like, wait, this is, like, another way for them to exploit me. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we love 50 hours a week for 28K a year. Yep. Crazy. And if you factor in all the time I worked outside of work, yeah. it's more like 80 hours yep. a week. <laughs> for the low, low price. <laughs> $28,000 a year. Oh, oh God. Yeah. yeah. But coffee shops... We love it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I really, yeah, one thing I definitely enjoyed about that, and I thought that they did pretty well, um, especially for, like, a fanfic writer who probably, assumably, in her teens when she wrote it. Reading it, I was just like, this is very well written for a fanfic. That's one thing that I really appreciate about yeah, it was like, like, some fan fiction is, like, it's exquisitely written. So, it's very good. were you... I should have kind of opened with this, but, like, I've been up since 3.30 in the morning. Were you <laughs> were you drawn to this specific fan fiction because it was sort of, like, one of the better ones that you've read and no. stayed with you? Um, I was drawn to it probably because it was, like, of... It wasn't super, super short, and it wasn't obviously, like, super long. So this, um, was, just, this was just in your, like, mental catalog of, oh, yeah, like, accessible fan fiction. I have, like, a book, bookmark folder... I of, love that. Of, like, Stormpilot fanfic on my phone. And I was just, like, scrolling through that, and I was like, which one would be best suited for this? <laughs> and then I just sent it to you. <laughs> because That's a lot really of them, funny. like, um... I mean, some of them are literally, like, 20 chapters long. Right. And then other ones... I didn't want to do one that was, like, in-universe, because I thought it would be interesting to, like, talk about, like, AU and, like, being set outside of the universe. Yeah. Um... Yeah, but I definitely, like, I usually, when I'm on AO3, um, I search by, like, kudos or Mm -hmm. hits, and usually, like, if they have higher amounts of, like, kudos, like, or likes that they get, then they'll be better written. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what I do when I search for webcomics as well, because I know if something only has, like, 200 likes, it might be a bit iffy. Yeah, exactly. But then I feel bad because, like, what if I never, like, discover anything new and exciting? <laughs> I mean, there's also, like, this, like, Storm Pilot's such a big phenomenon yeah. on Tumblr that people made, like, master lists of good Storm Pilot fans. Okay. So I also, like, looked at ones on there, too, mm-hmm. um, and added those to my bookmarks folder. God. <laughs> yeah, no, this was like a dedicated week of my life that I was obsessed with this fandom, and then I just left it entirely. I've I've had weeks like that. Yeah. I was off from school. I think it was winter break, mm-hmm. and I was at home at my parents' house, just kind of like with my MacBook, like in my room. Um, God. Yeah. That just reminds me, like, every... <laughs> this is so dark, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, every time in college where I would get out of the psych ward... Like, half the time it would be winter, and I would just, like, hang out in my parents' basement with, like, this specific <laughs> flannel blanket, like, all over me. With my, like, like, like laptop, like, pulled up to my neck yep. on Tumblr. 
like reading through like master lists of like a queer web comics because I was like thirsty for trans mask representation in gay stories. Yeah. And I would like I would like watch Special Victims Unit and then during the commercial breaks I'd scroll through Tumblr. <laughs> Oh my god, SVU. Yeah. I've seen like every episode of SVU. It's really bad. It's okay. I mean, it's a problematic I've seen a lot fave. of them too. Yeah. I, I have my like executive producer Dick Wolf hat and mm-hmm. around the summer when the protests were happening, I was like, I should not wear this hat. You should have worn it to a protest. I'm just that kidding. Would, copaganda. Cop what well, it is copaganda. Yeah, I mean it's straight copaganda. It's straight they literally copaganda. Have episodes where like they accidentally shoot an unarmed person and then you sympathize with the character who did well, it. Well, yeah, they frame it as just like, oh, he's committing police brutality because he's damaged and yeah, having a hard time with literally. his wife. And not only do they frame it that way, but they're also like, look at all the factors that go into this. Look at all that the person is going through. Look at all the Dick. cop has to suffer through. And look at like these people Dick who Wolf. are targeting us. Dick Wolf and his buddy Speedweed. <laughs> Speed. Do you ever think about how there's someone who works on that show who is named Speedweed? I didn't know that was a person. It's a person. Was, what, did you see that, like, in the credits? Or yeah, something? it's in the credits. Oh, Speedweed. Speedweed. Maybe, weed. like, that's not even a person. It's just, like, what Dick Wolf calls the <laughs> cocaine and weed he mixes together. <laughs> to get the ideas to, like, show her on this. He, does he, he has to do drugs to think of his <laughs> SVU plot lines. I mean, it's been 18 seasons. Like, you run out of shit eventually. Oh, my God. You can only do so many, like, three-episode story arcs. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's what I think of when I think of <laughs> Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I guess, like, when I think of Tumblr, I think of, like... After I left for college, my brother took my room because it was bigger and mm-hmm. it had like a queen bed, like a like really nice, like soft queen bed in it. Did that make you sad? Um, mostly because when I would come home from breaks, I would have to like sleep down in the this the room that he previously had. Right. And for some reason, like when he was like an angsty teenager, my mom was like, Do you want like a bed or do you want like a futon? And he was like, I want a futon. I had a futon when I was an angsty teenager, too. <laughs> and so because of that, I had to sleep on this, like, broken futon. <laughs> um, it wasn't broken, like, when I first got it, but, like, it broke over time. And yeah. I had to, like, stack books under it to, like, make it even. And, um, the like, room was an addition, so the floor was concrete with, like, wood covering it. Right. And it would get so cold in there, and there was only, like, one little vent. So I had a little space heater. So I just remember, like, being, like, cuddled up, and I would put my blanket over the space heater. And then if my dad came in and saw it, he would yell at me. But I was just, like, so cold, and I would just be, like, sitting there, like, on Tumblr, like, <laughs> scrolling. <laughs> just, like, I wish nah. I could go back to school when- with my dorm. When my parents changed my childhood room, I think when I was a sophomore in college, they, like, took down all my anime posters, and they, like, put all my comic books in the basement. Yeah. And I just remember it making me, like, real, real sad. Yeah, I mean, it is sad. Now, like, my old, well, my old room my brother has, and the room that I was staying in, my dad just uses as, like, an art studio. So, it is kind of weird, because, like, all of my stuff is just, like, totally gone from there. Right. Because I just have it's my a mom, weird like, feeling. donate everything that was, like, still there. Right. Um, but, yeah, it definitely is a weird feeling. However, what do you think is weirder? When people, like, entirely preserve their childhood rooms or when people's parents get rid of them? Um, I think it's weirder to preserve it into, like, the person's 40s or yeah. 30s. Okay, that's fair, yeah. Yeah, um, growing up, I had a babysitter named Pam... And I would go over to Pam's house and I would like sleep in Pam's childhood room when she didn't quite live there anymore. Yeah. Because it was like at her parents' house and she would like come over and take care of me. Yeah. And I don't know. It was just like weird that it was weird to me as like a very small child. It was like between the ages of like three and seven that she like no had her own house, but her childhood room was exactly the same. That is weird. Yeah. I don't know. This is like. Like it's so strange because like. It's, like, clinging to, like, your child and, like, the, the thing that you're... Right? Like, the person that your kid was instead of, like, acknowledging that they're, like, an adult now and have moved out. Yeah. I don't know. It's always been weird to me to, like, think about that. Mm-hmm. Mostly because I know, like, I mean, my parents, like, they were like, here you go, Aiden. Here's your sister's room. <laughs> like, immediately <laughs> after I left. Um, but... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, with the, with the sequel fanfic, I just... It feels to me like 
with like these romance stories and this has been said to death but there's like only like one or two plot lines you can do Mm -hmm. and if you do a sequel it's like gonna be about like proposing and there's gonna be like a jealousy character that like interferes with the relationship it was so minimized it was very minimized but like with every story like that if you're gonna continue it after the characters get together that's like one of the only I don't know, conflicts you can really introduce. Yeah, it's like a third-party character. Yeah, and, like, I've seen that over and over again, and every time it comes up, I'm like, come on, Mm -hmm. really? This is just, like, annoying. So I'm glad it was minimized. Um, But I don't know, the proposal scene was cute. The, like, not if I propose to you first thing was just, like, I was like, okay, that's, that's funny, that's fine. That's also been done to death, but it's cute. Yeah. I don't know. It was just, it's just, like, cute and nice. I was upset that the second one was so short. Same. Yeah, Yeah. me too. Because, like, the first one, at least, it was, like, a read. It took me, like, two days because I was, like, reading it after I took my sleep meds. Mm -hmm. Then I'm only awake for, like, 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) It was a pretty good chunk. Yeah, I liked the first one a lot. I like how it was kind of, like, a slow burn. Mm -hmm. I thought, like, the, like, initial kiss was kind of cute. Yeah, it was adorable. Um, and then the second one, I was like, ah, yes, the typical. Also, just, like, why is, like, is it a thing that, like, if you give someone something that your mom had, it means you're in love with them? I don't know. I just thought it was weird that, like, he as a man could fit into his mom's (laughs) jacket. That's a really good observation. (laughs) Because, like, he did that, and he's like, oh, God, this means I'm in love with him. And then, like, he does it, and, like, Ray, I think, notices, and she goes, that means you're in love with him. Yeah. And I'm just like, is that is that really it? And when Finn finds out that it's his mom's jacket, he gets, like, angry. Yeah. Kind of. He, like, pulls him into another room, and he's like, hey, is this your mom's jacket? And then he also makes the same jump, like, are you in love with me? I'm just like, why, why is that like a, a thing? a strong and bold assumption just, to like, make. Sometimes because, like, I'm... On the spectrum, I have NVLD. <laughs> when like I'll, I'll read something like that, I'm I'll just be, I'll be like, I guess that's how normal people work. I don't think so. Okay. But I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I. Mm. Like I don't. I don't know how relationships work. Same. When I'm in one, I'm just like, okay, this is how this works, I guess. Yeah. Same. But how do you feel about mullets coming back? On, on the right people, I find them attractive, actually. Right? It's yeah. crazy. Girls on uh, TikTok will just, like, cut themselves a little mu- mullet. And no, just, like, there's what? this um this trans YouTuber, Ty Turner, who is one of the atro- most attractive men I've ever seen. <laughs> um, and he's, like, he's, like, talked about, like, growing out of his bro phase and, like, presenting more in a way that makes him comfortable. Yeah. And that includes a really hot mullet. <laughs> Which is good for him. Hot mullet. Yeah, hot mullet. So it was like the mullet, the haircut of like the non-binary people. Oh my god, what if it is? I don't know. It might be. We're on to something. Thinking it, I, I, I actually know more than one non-binary person with, with a, mullet. a mullet. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, I have like my just below chin length <laughs> blonde to weirdness going on. That's I, okay. I need a haircut really bad. Yeah, me too, but I'm scared to go. Yeah, same. Also, last time I got my hair cut, my hair is really thick, yeah. so they didn't take enough weight out of it, so I just same. had, like, a bob that, like, poofed out. Literally, my hair is, like, square right now, because yeah. they didn't do any sort of, like, underlayer. I'm just like, this is this is not androgynous. I wanted to be like, can you do the thing where you just kind of, like, cut it? You know that yeah. thing where they do? They just kind of take the scissors and they just, like, <laughs> hack away at it? Yeah. yeah. To thin it out. Every time I get my hair cut, they're like, wow, you have so much hair. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I have to deal with it all the time. God, I, there was a point where, like, I, actually, second to last time I got my hair cut, the lady was like, you have so much hair. You'll never go bald. And then, like, a few weeks afterwards, I started noticing, like, oh, no. like that I'm, like, <laughs> starting to lose hair at my temples. And I'm just like, she cursed me. She cursed me. She cursed me. (laughs) She said, you'll never go bald. You'll start balding. (laughs) What a weird thing to say to someone. Right? That is so strange. (laughs) It, like, runs in my family. I'm going to have, like, Jude Law hair by the time I'm, like, 35. deep temple. Yeah, deep, deep temple. Oh, Jude Law. Mm Mm-hmm. He looks good. True. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't he look has, bad. He has aged well, like Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant's aged pretty well. I, all I watch is documentaries. 
I am so sick of the recent trope of, like, unreliable female narrator narrators who, like, go insane because of something their husband did. I feel like that's been really common. In, I like, mean, that's media recently. very, like, Shirley Jackson yeah. era fiction. Yeah. It's, like, very, like, 60s and 70s, like, talking about the way women have it. Mm-hmm. So, like, why is that having a comeback? I don't know. I don't know, but it is. Like, there's been, like, a lot of limited series recently. Yeah, that's, that's just, like, like a big thing that's, like, it. so the yellow wallpaper. I know. It's, <laughs> <laughs> like, early feminist fiction. Yeah, like, but it's, I don't know. It's so strange. Uh, the yellow wallpaper literally gave me, like, nightmares. I remember, God, so when I was in high school, this, I had a stalker. Um, we I did were, not expect this to go that route. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting there. No, that's all good. But yeah, we were like friends for a really long time. He was like a weird kid. He wore kilts to school. Yeah. He was just like really into the whole Celtic thing. He's a white nationalist now, which makes sense. That's, yeah, that's the, um, that's the character. Art. But like senior year, he just decided that he was like wildly attracted to me and like would make sexual comments all the time and like follow me around and like at one point it was outside of school which made me really uncomfortable yeah and like i couldn't shake him i would like tell him like disgusting things made up i made up about myself and he'd still be like okay oh my god yeah i'd be like i have three penises and he'd be like okay <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but yeah i like he was in my ap euro class with me um and i remember him just like first of all he pronounced candide Voltaire book, Candidi. And I was just like, what? Like, like Candida? Like a yeast infection? <laughs> <laughs> um, but he also, he read the yellow wallpaper and he was like, I don't get it. How does this have to do with feminism? Oh my god. And I'm just like, you are the dumbest person I've ever met. My English teacher had to explain to like a lot of people what it had to do with feminism. How? And that like it was How? like a feminist text. How? I don't know. Everyone was like, I don't get what's going on. And she was like, it's just postpartum depression yeah like how do you how do you read something with like that accessible of a theme and be like i don't get it i, I don't know it's like it's also like when we read fahrenheit 451 in like 10th grade one of my friends was like i don't understand this i'm just like it's 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 fucking fahrenheit 451 what yeah, don't you like, get what don't you get about it you can like google what does it mean and you're yeah good to go like spark notes the themes are listed right there <laughs> Fahrenheit 451. I've never read it. Don't plan to. Yeah. You know, you know what I like? I like I like when like fan fiction and comics have themes Same. instead of just being horny. Same. I love that. Like a well-written yeah. fanfic, like oof. So good. Mm -hmm. Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm talking about you. No, I'm not. But people are still complaining about Fifty Shades of Grey ten years later. That's because they don't have lives. Fifty Shades of Grey is the most vanilla, like, BDSM shit that exists. I, Even though it's not actual BDSM because it's just, like, misogynistic abuse, but... I never read it, never watched any of the movies, largely because, I don't know, heterosexual romance and sex media does not appeal to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know... <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. You don't, you're not missing much. Like, the only time I can really get into it is, like, when it's, A, cute, and, two, from, like, a doofy male perspective. Yeah. Where he's just, like, a nerd and, like, genuinely sweet and, like, it can't get a girl's attention. Yeah. That's the only time I like it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's no, it. No other times. I mean, Fifty Shades is, like, garbage, but... Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I do enjoy a good doofy male perspective, as long as it doesn't get, like, creepy. No, yeah. Yeah, like, there's some, there's some, like, shoujo manga from, like, male perspective that are, like, generally s sweet and cute. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the time when, like, I don't know, romance media is written from a male perspective, it just reads as gross. Yeah. And I, like, as a male-identified person, I'm just like, I don't look at women this way. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with you? Like, you're just gross. <laughs> so, I feel like while we're... To sort of close this off, I guess, since we, we haven't had a firm plot this episode, but <laughs> it's, been it's fine. One. It's been a week one. It's fine. It's That's fine. What I'm when sure. I lead things. <laughs> um, 
So it's interesting to me that a lot of fan fiction is gay. And you notice that, like, the only really straight fan fiction there is is, like, self-insert with, like, band members. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? No, um, there is some straight fanfic. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, a is lot it, of it is. is. Do you think it's because heterosexuality is less escapist? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I think so. And I think, like, we talked a little bit about this before, like, with the yaoi, and mm-hmm. um, I think girls, like, they're more comfortable exploring their sexuality, like, in a... Through, like, a male proxy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, I don't know, there's, like, I guess there's, like, some fem slash mm-hmm. fan fiction, but there's, like, less of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't, I've never quite understood why that is. Like, what makes people, like, less attracted to that as, like, escapism? Do you have any insight? I don't know. Maybe it's just, like, it's not, like, they're less attracted to that, but, like, more attracted to, like, like, slash fic just because there's, like, less representation Mm -hmm. in the media. Right. Yeah. And that's why it, like, dominates most of fanfic because, like, they know it's not something that they're going to get from the creators right yeah okay i mean that makes a lot of sense and there's sort of the whole like outgrowth of fan fiction as a way to like give yourself something from the media that you weren't getting yeah exactly yeah i mean that makes sense yeah um especially with evangelion fan fiction (laughs) uh which is like (laughs) the only kind i've really dealt with as an adult like i said um there's, like, implied, like, a gay relationship, but because Kaworu fucking gets nerfed because he's an alien, uh, you can't really, you can't really give them a happy ending, yeah. so, like, you have to do that on your own. Yeah. He gets nerfed. Yeah. He got got. He got got because he was, like, the seventh angel or something <laughs> that was sent to destroy the world. I've never seen Evon Kelly. <laughs> oh my god, it's... I, I might make you watch it for an episode. Okay. I haven't watched it since 8th grade when oh. they had to, like, mail you the DVDs oh, through no. Netflix. <laughs> and I remember my dad walking in at one point being like, the sound mixing on this is terrible. Oh, my God. <laughs> a classic. Because it was, like, the old English dub from, like, 97. Yeah. So it was, like, not good. But also, the thing with Evangelion is that, like, it started with, like, a really good budget, really well-written... And then as it started going on, they ran out of money, and Hideaki Anno, who was the director, got, like, really, really catatonically depressed. Oh, no! And, like, the last two episodes are just, like, Shinji having a nervous breakdown, and it's all just, like, concept art flashing. Yeah. Because <laughs> they had no more money. Oh, no. They ran out of cash. Yep. Sad. Sad. Um, all right, so... What would you like to subject me to next week? So I had this idea. So you know I've been spending, like, emotional self-harming myself by going on kiwi farms. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not going to make you go on kiwi farms. Don't worry. But how familiar are are you with the concept of internet lol cows? Um, very vaguely. So you have, like, you have, like, a vague concept of what they are. Yeah. Okay, what was your exposure to that? Um, probably, like, my very brief time on iFunny. <laughs> okay. I don't know, like... <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll, I was, we'll like, take 18. it. was, Yeah. I don't really, but yeah. I was gonna... Chris Chan is a topic that's sort of been beat to death, um, because it's been happening since 2007, but I might send you the Frederick Nudson uh, down the rabbit hole on Chris Chan... And maybe a few other sources of various other people like that. Yeah. And I want to talk about the ethics of lol cows and internet voyeurism. All right. I'm in. Uh, Chris Chan rings a bell to me. Chris Chan is a lot. Okay. It's all... Oh, Chris Chan is, like, very ethically dubious (laughs) as a concept. So we'll get into that. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. All right. So till next week... This has been Digital Subjectivities. (laughs) Have a good week, guys. Have a good week, guys. Thanks. Logging out. Bye.